All right. So first off, congratulations, Connecticut College. Um, tremendous season. Um, I'm going to have you introduce yourselves first, um, and then we'll have Coach uh, have an opening statement for us. Um, Lorenzo Bocchetti. I'm a senior on the team. Uh, I'm T2. I'm also a senior on the team. Ruben Burke, head coach. All right, Coach. So start us off with an opening statement following, you know, national championship game. Yeah. Um, really surreal feeling because I think as a player, you work your whole life uh, dreaming about this moment. As a coach, you go into coaching uh, to live for moments like this. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a drill dream for so long and, and once you're living in the moment uh, honestly it's it's tough to do an interview because I've lost for words a little bit but really really special and uh, I'm just so happy for these guys happy for the alumni happy for the student body um, the administrators and and our guys you know it's it's a lot of a lot of a lot of work to get to where they are thank you um, first, we'd like to open it up for questions for the student athletes, and then we'll let them uh, continue celebrating. Lorenzo, uh, congratulations on the championship. And uh, just want to know what, what went through your mind when you stepped up for that final PK with a chance to clinch the championship for the team. Um, thank you. Uh, honestly, I wasn't thinking about much. I just knew where I was going to hit it. Uh, <laughs> we, we've trained it so many times in practice. Uh, so, I mean, I, I knew where I was going to put it. I knew that I was going to send the keeper the wrong way. And, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, I wasn't having too many thoughts, to be honest. For, for both of you guys, um, first national championship in program history, how does it feel to be a part of this? Um, <laughs> I don't think it's completely sunk in yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, honestly, it still feels like a dream right now. We haven't really processed anything. We're still in the process of processing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think for for us especially, um, it hasn't really sunk in like what we've done in terms of, um, you know, helping to progress con athletics. But, um, you know, to have that as as your your career ending game, I mean, Definitely didn't want to be on the other end of it. And it's just, yeah, it's an unmatched feeling right now. Hi, this is uh, Gavin Key from the London Day. Lorenzo, what was it like playing in that game? I mean, it was just a crazy, it was, it was back and forth and must've been exhausting. Uh, yeah, I mean, we knew that they were going to come out firing. They're a team that always performs very well in the first half. They usually score in the first half. So we felt that if we could keep them at bay in the first half, um, you know, we would have the leg up. And so we sort of just took the game minute by minute. I mean, we always say first five minutes of the half, last five minutes of the half. Uh, so, I mean, you know, we, we didn't look at it as a full 90. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was chaos. We, we went up. We're scraping by to keep the lead, give up a goal with a minute and a half to, left in the game. But I mean, credit to the full team. I mean, when we huddled up after conceding that goal, there wasn't a shred of doubt in any player's face. I mean, everybody was composed and knew that we were still going to get the job done. What do you guys think it's like back on campus right now? <laughs> I hope fun. <laughs> <laughs> And how do you think? Okay, sorry, how do you think we? So how do you think you're able to pull it out? I mean, all these tight games. You had three three games to go overtime in the NCAA tournament. At how do you think you're able to to kind of outlast the whole the whole run? Uh, well, I think like tournament time is like a lot of emotions going on. It's like uh, you can lose a game like in a, with a single mistake, and uh, I think the biggest uh, part of that is uh, sticking to what made you get to the tournament in the first place. And uh, well, well, coaching staff kept emphasizing to us that we have to stick to a game plan, no matter how much emotions are in the game. And I think the, the younger guys did, did a really good job of doing that. And then we, we also added to that by uh, being leaders in the team. Thanks. I just had one. I just had one more for the two of you guys. Um, what is it that made this year's team special? It, was there just you know, more of a, a team bonding or a chemistry from day one when you started camp? I mean, what was it that, that made this one special? I'd say, I mean, 
this has not been something that has been in the making for three or four months when we started up in late <laughs> August. I mean, this has been something that last fall with COVID, I mean, the two of us were out there training. Coach had us out there six days a week uh, practicing really hard every single day uh, for the entire fall with, you know, we had 15 guys on campus and then the full team came back in the spring. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, we were, we were fully prepared. Um, you know, we have a deep team, a very deep bench, but I mean, when you put in those kind of hours early on and for, for two years straight, I mean, yeah, the group, the group is going to be close and, and we know what we've put into it and, you know, you're just so driven and focused, nothing else matters. Yeah, I also think a big part of uh, the reason why this team is special is this, uh, if I had to pick one word, I'd say belief. We've believed in every single uh, training session, like every single play that we, we thought would uh, make us better. And everybody was brought into the idea of being of believing in that until until the end. I think that's what kept, uh, kept us going uh, whenever we face adversity too. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Any final questions for our student athletes? All right, you guys can head out. Thank you. you. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Yeah, All right, now we'll open some open up the floor for questions for Coach. Hi, Ruben. Congratulations. Thanks, Gavin. Uh, what was the thought process about putting Peter in for the shootout? I mean, that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody uh, in that situation. Yeah. Um, it, it, it'd be a lot of pressure if he hadn't done it before, but, you know, he'd, he'd more than proven himself against Colby. Um, the coach, you go back, you go back to what works, right? And uh, stuck with the relatively the same PK shooters, um, added MT. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Pete, you know, I think once you make the NESCAC tournament, that that's, that's, uh, you know, it's your duty to practice PKs every, every day. And, uh, yeah, so for, for three weeks or so, Peter has gotten tons and tons of reps in practice and, uh, he, he believed in himself. He was confident the team wanted him in that and, uh, I don't think there was much pressure, uh, relatively less pressure, knowing that he could save multiple shots. Uh, sorry, against Salem State. When when he makes those two saves, how much does it kind of maybe have a calming effect on the guys stepping up to hit the ball because they know that he's made two saves? Huge. It's huge, and that's why I think you want to. Um, and that's uh, you know I think that's why you want to shoot first get off on a good start and then Peter makes a save and, and the momentum builds for sure. So um, yeah, with it, with each goal and, and with each save, you know, confidence builds for sure. And just what was the kind of the, you know, last night, like after winning and then you have to turn around and play this game again. I know Amherst went overtime too, but what, yeah. what was kind of like just getting ready for this game? Tough, tough, super tough. You know, you wish there was a day in between. Um, maybe that's something, um, you know, people can look at and in, in giving more more time for recovery for for these players. Um, but yeah, you you wake up in the morning, you rewatch Amherst versus Chicago, uh, think about the things that um, are good matchups and, and things that you can take advantage of. Um, you prepare a document for the team. Uh, you make clips. You have a team meeting. Talk about that and. And you just keep instilling belief in, in the guy. So it's a, it's a super quick turnaround. The toughest part about, about it is recovery, but um, we have a routine about preparing for our opponents. And, and in that regard, nothing really changes. You just, you just prepare as normal and, uh, and go from there. Thanks. Hey, Ruben, congrats on the win. Thank you. Thanks. Man. Um, Kind of the same question I asked. I asked the players is, from your vantage point, what what made this team special? Could you see anything um, coming into this season, especially you know after the adversity from COVID last year? I mean, what what did you notice as the season went on about this team? 
Yeah, di a different answer than probably Bochetti or um, MT. For me, I'd use the word selflessness. Like um, everyone talks about, yeah, we do have depth, but there's still X amount of guys on the team that don't play. But to be a good team, those guys that don't play have to be bang at it at training every day. Um, and a lot of guys put in a ton of work in the weight room, um, fitness, practices, being disciplined, professional, and, and they don't play, but they make the team better. And um, I mean, no, the season, the season is really short, you know, especially in the NESCAC, you don't really have much of a preseason. So the guys have to come together quickly, realize their role in the team and embrace their role. Um, because the season is so quick, if you have bad chemistry, if you have a couple um, guys that are cancerous, it, it, you know, it can affect results. But regardless of if you didn't play, if you played five minutes, if you're Augie DeGera and you're an All-American player, like everyone is bought into putting the team first, being his best teammate as they can. And there's really no drama. There's no distractions on the team. You know, it's it's a team. It's, it's, it's fully a team. So, and, and, and that might not seem special, but I think in, in the world that we live in, it's, it's all about yourself. It's, it's me, me, me. And to have guys that don't care about playing time and, and just want to see the team win is, is special to me. For a lot of teams, if, if they surrendered a goal, like, like you guys allowed in that final minute and a half, I mean, kind of a, kind of a helter skelter play, a, a scrum in front of the net, um, yeah. A lot of teams might have got deflated by that. You guys seem to stay resilient through that. How, how much does that speak to senior leadership? Yeah, huge. Um, and I, in the beginning of the year, you you tell the guys, um, you know, when you concede, the most important thing is your reaction. Um, regroup, uh, get everyone on the same page, refocus, and um, you know, don't don't let it hurt. Don't let it hurt you. Obviously, in soccer, I can't go out onto the field and, and regroup the team. So it's a tremendous job of Bochetti, Jonas, uh, Augie. Um, you know, we, we, we bent, but we didn't break. And, um, and yeah, it would have been easy uh, conceding with a minute 30 left in, in a regular time to have a bad overtime and, and let that feeling linger. But, um, but yeah, the, you know, the leadership is paramount. And uh, we... we you know, we couldn't have gotten through this game with uh, without it, for sure. Thanks, Ruben. Ruben, to Gavin again. Uh, you took a, you took kind of took down a lot of the roadblocks that have been in your way. You beat you beat Tufts, and I could think Amherst had won maybe I don't know ten straight in the series with you. And so, is it even more satisfying that uh -huh. you know what kind of grind it is to go through the NESCAC to to win it uh, over a NESCAC team? Yeah, I think I think to be honest, if, if you're going to win a national championship, at minimum, you're going to have to be uh, a NESCAC team. Um, but yeah, you know, um, the most the most important thing to me is playing to our identity. What what is con soccer? How how do we want to be successful? Can we actualize the vision of our best selves? And I think if you're your best self, then the robot, the roadblocks to some extent are regardless. Like, you know, Tufts is going to be a really good team. Washington Lee, amazing team. Redlands, amazing team. Basically, you're going to come up against all these good teams. You just got to be the best version of yourself. So, yeah, a lot of roadblocks. And we already know before the tournament, if you want to win a national championship, you got to get through minimum one nest cap team. Um, so yeah, cha challenging, but um, yeah, still still lost for words, I suppose. And how will you celebrate winning? Uh, by by uh, being on time to a 7 a.m. flight. <laughs> so. <laughs> will you sleep tonight? Or you just too uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get an hour or two. Um, I got over a thousand text messages, so um, oh. try to... Uh, Try to connect with family and friends, and, uh, and yeah, just just be on time to the airport because these guys, uh, that's their last priority. We'll have a safe trip back. Thank you, Gavin.
Any final questions for coach? Thank, Thank you, you guys. So Congratulations again. Thank you.